at its era as a funeral settlement of conflict. A rugged tour of the <laughs> island. Jim, if you're up the back. My name's Nigel, I'm your guide today on Sarah's Island. You don't have to stick with the story if you don't wish to, of course, just uh, rack off. <laughs> if you do go up by yourself, please stick to the paths, don't handle the ruins or the snakes. Have a good old look at the ruins, but just try not to tread on trying to handle them. Now, we're here in the slip yards. 131 ships, boats, vessels of all kinds were launched at these two slips here, the small slip, and here, the main slip, in just a little under 12 years. 96 of those under the stewardship of one particular shipwright, a bloke called David Hoy. There are logs sticking out there. Well, this rectangular patch of water goes straight out there, 12 metres this slip goes out. And the same story if I walk out there, it gets quite dead, quite crisp there. Now, that is actually a tiny island. It's Halliday's Island. And that is where they buried the dead. Convicts, that is. There are 80 men buried out there. First convict buried there, his name was John Ollery. After Ollery were buried there, the convicts referred to that island as Ollery's Holiday. <laughs> the holiday to these fellows, you see, was a day of freedom, they reckon. And they reckon if you're out there, you're on holiday. And this is typical of the sense of humour of the boys here, when I think is absolutely marvellous. To think of the face of all the brutality and hardship uh, that they endured here, they always had time to have a laugh. And that's why I know they won't mind us having a bit of a laugh today. Let's head off this way down the track. If you've got any questions, you can have a peek if you like. We're going to continue through into the master yard. We'll just stop briefly and have a look at these forges. There's three blacksmith forges here. Whitesmith forge. Up over the back is the nail maker's forge. That one up over the back there. Uh, the place is muddy. It's mucked up and it's confused. Continued by propaganda and fiction. Uh, he's got his comics working away waist deep in the Gordon River. Oh, you've been up the Gordon today. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a long legs, did they? She's average depth, 10 metres. She's 40 metres deep in one spot alone. Three metres either bank. So this was right at the mouth. Yeah. Today, we're going to scrape away some of this propaganda and fiction, and I'm going to introduce you to some of the real people that actually lived and worked here. Like the Commandant. He had his office up there with that vine choked trees. And he's the bloke in charge, all right? Here's how to go. Half hour before dawn. Muster bell. All you convicts rise and shine in the new penitentiary you saw. You come down from there in single file. Keep a head count on it. March around at water's edge and into here. This is the muster gun. Now the commandant is waiting down from his day office to the nest pulpit. These stones, the remains thereof. This is a big structure, apparently, designed to intimidate. Soon the island. This is one of the windiest places on earth. When you're out westward today, when you're out at Hell's Gates, I mean, and you look westward, the next land sighting would be South Africa. Spoken like true mainlanders. Listen to you. You've come a lot further. That's right, sir. Falkland Islands it would be. You'd miss South Africa, gentlemen, by about 300k. And you must be from New South Wales, I reckon. Yeah, yeah look. Yeah. Then on to the working dock. <laughs> Close and personal, just don't handle the ruins or tread on them, but by all means have a good old look. Now, this is where all the female servants ended up, all right? Uh, doing all the operations here. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I belong.
about that, miss? <laughs> How'd you like to live on Sarah's Island back then, matey? Now, there's no school today. This is all down to vandalism, raiding parties, souvenir hunters, right through the 20th century. This part of our history to Tasmania is considered a real blight, and it was uh, something we're anxious to be well shot of. Old people here especially feel like even you lot here today, you just, it shouldn't be happening. It should be concreted over or something. We thought until 1980 we had to build a giant pineapple to attract you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we woke up one day and realised we were sitting on one. Come and look at another bit of the pineapple over here. This is the day I wanted just for you to play up on the island, alright? It's funny. We're given the opportunity, and they were often were given a choice between so many lasers or a knife or two of themselves, the men would rather lose their back than lose their mind. This jail is the legacy of a, a chap called Jeremy Benton. Now his designs are all over the place. Alcatraz Prison, you must have heard of that. That's a Jeremy Benton design. All the panopticon work at Port Arthur, that's Bentham. And is this one ringing any bell? 60 desks separated by a foot and a half facing the educator. <laughs> now I'm afraid so, my dear friends. The modern classroom is also a Jeremy Bentham invention. <laughs> 240 men. Now you've got to pull up and say, why such discipline? What the hell's going on here? The men they have locked up on this island are not violent thieves and they are not murderers either. I mean, get that out of your head. Think it through yourselves. What happens to murderers? Yeah, they get hanged. You don't make it to places like this. And did I say men, average age here is 20. How old would that gentleman be out the back there? He's older. <laughs> <laughs> he scrubs up pretty well, doesn't he? This bush ranger. I'm saying there are no angels either. But also, more than likely, he's tried to nick off from some other penal settled, uh, servitude elsewhere throughout New South Wales or Van Diemen's land. And this place is to make an example of that crime. I get to join him there. And this was known as a murder-suicide pact. The only sure way to get yourself out of this place, you've got to get yourself a ticket to heaven. New broom in town, new commandant. A big storm and a murder out on Grummet Rock. Now, the new commandant is a bloke, young bloke called James Butler. When he turns up here, so does a terrific storm. Flattens the whole settlement. There's no protection for the wind because they've gone and cut down all the trees. <laughs> so, in the rebuild, he's keen to impress this young bloke. In those days, he had to actually do stuff, not just make a web page. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we end up with world's best practice jail. <laughs> Thirty-six hours. Keep going. Try and get the sailing ship to come back the other way, though. Forties. You can't go the other way in the sailing ship. Yeah. So they went out of here. Yes or no answer, it'll take half an hour. Uh, 
She's a great lady. Diane used to work on the boat with other dealers, Sarah Holland. It's a good play. Good and participation. She's not the only one. She's quickly skate through the rest. There's his little pine. Oh, there's Jack Hunter. Oh, nice light wood. Beautiful timber. Fine grain. That slow rate of growth gives you fine grain. That's why the craftsmen will love it. This is King Billy. Your split and timber. All the shingles in that hut in there, that museum, for instance, they are always uh, uh, split shingles, whatever, paling. King Billy. Thursday, and we're going on our train ride after heavy rain this morning, and it looks like a rainy day. It's a happy group of drivers. She's officially being handed over here today. She was the one that was a puffing billy. So the mine manager at that time, was just, it's only about the length of three carriages. So you can imagine the force of seeds that will occur when this harbour goes in about this carriage. Everybody kept asking us, what sort are they? It's a band to find out. the green ecologist because it's the reason why because you're actually allowed to do it and the mountain the reason is folks is some of those ones have been laying on the forest floor they'll be laying down there for 500 years they won't rot if a fire happened to go right through the way down with the sleeping down will have the track because it was still perfect now if you do look out the right hand side of the street around us on the other side of the river 
barges, swing boats, paddle boats. Yeah. We want those tree to, trees to disappear, but of course they won't. Squeeze it. Yeah. Adjust the. Uh, now, anybody can tell me how many rivets there are in this bridge. We've got a nice surprise. There are thousands. And the reason it's painted that bright orange colour for our Bob, the train driver, he missed it twice last year. <laughs> Not true, thanks. It's a paint that keeps the weather out, of course. Now, just on the right hand side of the train, the little clearing we're going past there, this is where the little township of Tipper going. <laughs> Anytime you wish. The three of our Tasmanian trees, I mentioned we've got an 800 year old King Billy, a 1600 year old Hewan Pine, and a 400 year old. I'll point them out to you. And you can see that road that goes up to our right hand side, ladies and gentlemen. That's part of the Bailey Bridge used to cross the Derwent when the Derwent Bridge got run into by a ship. That, that's the King Billy, that's the Hewan. Yeah, that's just a, uh, no, that's um, Celery Top. Yep. Yeah, Celery Top. Sassafras has got a real The old bridge. Now some of the right, you may have to stand up and see that. to make it a bit more interpretive for you. Some of the old railway lines, you can see the ferns growing up the middle of the track there. Now the men that used to work here, they used to work from... lunch here while waiting for the train to reverse. Out there is the King River. We'll get steamed up. the white line in a minute.
mouth in the sewer. Need to do the old track. Doing a little forest walk. Here we go again. One of the hundred bridges or so. Layers of silt over the years. The railway station is just to the right up there.